I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and I, I am the luckiest guy in the world to get to talk to people like you. We're here with Mark Whitfield. I man, oh, very kind. How are you? Well, I'm I'm good. You know, the last time I saw you in person was about four or five years ago with your family band at the Velvet Note in Alpharetta, Georgia, with your two sons and Roland Gurren. Oh, bass. right, right, Roland Gurren. Yeah, on, on bass, and it was awesome. It was, it was absolutely awesome. And I thought, what a cool thing for a guy to be able to share music with his family, with his sons at that level. I mean, I'm not just, we're not talking about, you know, you are my son, and we're talking about some serious shit. And I thought, wow, what a fantastic thing. What a gift. It's just tremendous. Anyway, that's the last time I saw you in person, anyway. Oh, well, but thank I, you. That's how I define uh, being the luckiest guy in the world. You know, I, I um, to have two sons who are not only uh, into playing music, but are so good, I can barely keep up with them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it, you know, it's just a real blessing. And so, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I've, I've had a wonderful, wonderful time playing music with them and watching them grow up. And, and uh, it's been great. No, that, that's that's pretty amazing. Well, you know, you are you're um you're quite a guy, you know, and, and I I mean that I really mean that seriously. I mean it's like you are a guitar player, but you're really an intellectual. And uh I don't know if people understand that about you. I don't think you would even think of yourself like that, but maybe uh, you no. <laughs> no uh, you, you had the opportunity to go to medical school. I did. You hung around Georgetown for a while. I mean, that's not exactly a uh, podunk you. Uh, hung around. Absolutely. Not. No. You you competed and in, uh, in won scholarships to Berkeley, but not only in one instrument, but in two. Not 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 that you went to Berkeley, you got into Berkeley, or you paid your money and went to Berkeley, right? but you actually won two scholarships. You did something a lot of guys don't do. A lot of guys and, and women don't do. Men and women don't do. And that's you 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 bothered to do that little thing called graduate. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so, many, so, so many guys don't because they want to play, you know, and, yeah. and, and they get offered gigs and they go on the road or they go to New York or whatever they do. Uh, but some guys actually hang out and, um, you know, and, and complete it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you did that. I was watching a little bit of your True Fire, you know, video you did a while back. And, you know, you're a really, really good teacher. And no, you really are. And and the, the, my my litmus test for that is: can you explain it to a six year old? And so when I'm listening to you talk about you know explaining, you know call and response and and things like that, you know you you do it in a way that's you know really you know just you're very gracious, you know you you do a great job with it and you explain it in a way that's very understandable and all that. You know, I mean, so you're you're a hell of a guy. So I, we normally don't talk about history uh, on this. Yeah. We we talk jazz guitar today. You know, we really. But but with you, I think it's I think it's important to talk about your history a little bit. Not only have you played with a lot of people, mm -hmm. and not only have you played with a lot of famous people. I mean, a lot of famous people. But you played with famous people who are famous for being persnickety. You played with the most god awful, and 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 I say that with respect but you know some really really picky people mm. i mean you play with sting yeah play with chris Bodie, obviously the, those two come together you play with diana crawl mm -hmm. um i mean there's a whole list of people here that you know these these are recent ones by the way that uh, you played with you know ray charles herbie hancock yeah uh burt Bacharach, shirley horn winton marsalis bradford marsalis now there's a couple of really easy going guys yeah we're not easy going <laughs> <laughs> uh, but and then and then one of the things that really blows me away is you're here you are I think you're about 25 years old and George Benson's at his like zenith peak he's he's maybe late 40s sure, sure. 1991 big band concert with with George Quincy's leading the big band and you're the second guitar player you got to be about 24 25 years old mm -hmm. And George is arguably the greatest that ever lived. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, I just, he's, and he, he's playing his 
butt off on the solo. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. just killing it, you know, doing, you know, with this with the strumming thing, you know. I mean, yeah, and, and the octaves and and the, and the quads and, and you know all the stuff, you know, and just pulling everything out of the book, and then they throw it over to you, and you kill it. <laughs> you kill it. I mean, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know at all that that you know that you. I mean, you are not nervous, not anything. I mean, you just. You know, they have to day at, day at the office, you know. And I don't know how many people could pull that one off. And then there's one other, and I, I can't remember, there's one other one that I, that, I, that I made note to myself. You were being interviewed about Wes Montgomery. Mm -hmm. And you were sitting there with your, uh, you have a, an old Gibson studio, uh, L5 studio. Oh, no, right. so, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, and, and it was, you know, just matter of fact, talking about, you know, these different styles, the Django style and all this kind of stuff. That was with Dr. Billy Taylor, I believe. Oh, right? that, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Man, it's just like, wow. And, and you were really young when you're, when you're doing all that. And then, I, and then I, of course, then I see you on the, the big band stage, and I see you with other, all these different scenarios you played and all these people you played it with, with. And then I see you at Smalls about, what, a month ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a month ago, and, uh, you know, with a quartet, just doing your thing. And I'm going, man, I, I just I just love that you're just you're just about making music. And and apparently people that witness you making music are about you making music with them, which is really, really cool. I mean, that's what everybody hopes for. You're the only guitar player I can think of that plays with his whole body. I mean, you are engaged. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, you're 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 playing some stuff. But you you talk about in in your in one of your videos you talk about your music as a language as a communication. We've always heard music as a language. You've got to understand the, the, this that you know thing. But you took it one step further into something that I preach with with people that will listen to me. There's you know it's communication. That's everything. You know it doesn't matter what you do if you're not communicating somehow to whoever it is you're trying to communicate to. Then you, then you're failing at it. And you and you bring that up in, in in this particular video. You're talking about how the most important thing to do is to communicate, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. So, with all of that being said, and watching you play, man, I mean, you are you got it going on, totally physically engaged in what you're doing, and it's it's such a cool thing because um, obviously you got great time. You got all, all the stuff that you want as a musician. You've got all that. You've had that since you were seven years old. Um, but man, you live it. And I can't tell you how much I, I respect that. I just think it's wonderful. It's really, really cool. And, um, you know, and, and you're, um, I guess one of the most impressive people, guitarists that I've ever talked to in terms of just the way that you've gone about your business, the things that you've accomplished, the people you've played with, the attitude that you have, the attitude you have towards your audience when you're performing. I mean, I've seen you in front of big, big stages. I mean, when you play with Chris, that's a lot of people out there and you're in yeah. smalls playing, not a lot of people there, <laughs> but you wouldn't know it. You would know there's a difference in the way you go about your business, man. It could be three people and, and you know, and or or, you know, 30,000 or whatever. And you would know because yeah. you are you are about it. Well, I'm glad that that comes across that way. That's that's uh, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a real joy. I've always had had um, such, you know, such a great time, and a great appreciation for the opportunity to play. Uh, I've been around some really, really amazingly talented musicians, guys who had so much more um, in, the, in, in, way, in the way of natural gifts than myself. You know, I had to work really hard uh, to feel comfortable playing with my, with my contemporaries, with Chris McBride, with Roy Hargrove, people like that. Uh, um, and I've always, you know, had you know, gotten so much joy back from playing the music, from playing for people, and and, and uh, I was also fortunate, in, you know, in my formative years to be around people who were really focused on 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 the main reason we play. You know, uh, uh, Jack. When I played with Jack McDuff, of course, he's the guy with you know George Benson got to start playing with Jack. Uh, Jack demanded that we be at our absolute best uh, um, every note that we played. You know, he, he was relentless in terms of um, uh, the pressure to be to, to, to pressure to, the pressure to be uh, to give your all. Uh, it could be two in the morning at some you know some obscure club in Minneapolis, or you know it could be you know it could be on the main stage at the North Sea Jazz Festival. 
Um, I, at that point, I realized I wasn't I wasn't playing for the audience's approval alone. I played for his approval first. I had to get in, and for him, it, and being great for him meant playing the music properly. You know, being being invested, being involved, but also giving a hundred percent of what you have. And he and, and that that didn't warrant a, a pat on the back from him. You know, it was he always had something critical to say, but it, but giving him a hundred percent gave him. It, you know, when he, I, I could take his his crit, his critique to heart, and I and I knew exactly what I needed to work on, so I could overcome whatever those things were for the you know the next performance. And and, and I remember one time we were playing uh, uh, one of his classic songs where George had played a great solo on a recording, and it's the thing where you where you where you play a chorus of the blues and you play eight bars. And then you take, and, and there's a four bar break for the next soloist. And I was prepared for about two or three courses of that, of that, uh, that four bar break. And I thought on the fourth time, I, uh, uh, I was out of ideas clearly, but I thought I'd mask it by playing some kind of cool chord thing. <laughs> and I played it and I was all excited. And I looked over at Jackson, ah, oh, out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> The minute I got back to the hotel that night, you know, I, I was, you know, sitting there with my guitar work, working on new things. And, 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 and um, I think, it, you know, it's, instead of, you know, going out, hanging out, being with my friends or whatever, I was all about the business, you know, because it, it was nothing, nothing felt worse than letting him down and nothing felt better than that eventual feeling of, you know, playing, looking over at him and he would just look at me and smile and be like, yeah, you, you get it. I love you it, know? man. And so being able, to, being able to bring that, you know, that, 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 that essence, that spirit to the bandstand and, and play before people, whether it's one person or a thousand, I've always been able to sort of, uh, uh, get lost in the music in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I close, I, you know, I, I, someone asked me why I play with my eyes closed and I would say, well, uh, believe it or not, when my eyes are closed, I'm seeing everything much more clear. Much more clearly. I, I just, that's what I can see. I, you know, I, I, it's almost like I'm floating above the bandstand, watching myself play with the other musicians. You know, and 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 taking in the experience with the audience. And I think that that's kind of what you see. You know, I, when I first saw, you know, we didn't obviously be you know being at 55 now. I, I spent a lot of time playing before I saw myself play. Right, <laughs> it was like I was on IG Live as a kid. Right, so I can remember. Um, the first time I saw a video, a video of myself playing, I was horrified. I had, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> you know, that all the, you know, the, 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 there was so much motion because right. it was like I'm sitting still playing. You know, I had, and then, uh, uh, and then, so then there was the period of me trying to rein it in. You know, trying, you know, trying. Uh, um, but it's like this, this, uh, uh, this old, you know, this old, this waterfall of, you know, lot, you know, of energy just wants to come out. And so, um, I, you know, I, I've always, you know, just sort of uh, allowed myself to put my all into it and and be fully exposed to the music and to the audience. You know, and and, and fortunately, most of the time that works out pretty well. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> I love it. So the magazine, you know, is, is called Jazz Guitar Today. And we try to take that real seriously. I, I felt it important to, to go back and talk about your, your past a little bit because I was so blown away with it. But so what are you doing today? What's going on with you? What's Mark Woodfield up now? What are you doing? What's, 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 what's well, engaging you? So, you know, I, uh, like, like so many of us uh, um, who have you know done just about done one thing for the last I don't know, 20, 30 years? The pandemic was was an interesting time, an interesting challenge, you know. And I had a, a, um, like Chris Bode used to say, "Man, I hate coming off the road because then we have to, we have to go home and face our lives," you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> for me, I had I had a lot of time to to think about. Uh, um, how I wanted to approach whatever this next phase was going to be, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, um, obviously, I still I, I still want to play and record and write and tour and, and all these things, but I had never really put uh, any significant amount of uh, of time or energy into teaching. You know, a few videos here. I did a, a short stint teaching at Berkeley when when my sons had were going there, just more as an excuse to just kind of. Uh, 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 you know, watch over them. Uh, um, 
And I, you know, and I, it's funny, it, it, it happens before you realize it. You, you know, I, I you sort of turn the corner and all of a sudden you look, look back at all, at this wealth of experience. Uh, um, you know, all this time that I've spent uh, playing and touring and, and being soaking up uh, life experiences with these wonderful musicians. Uh, and then you realize that they're gone. You know, so many of our heroes and, and the people that, uh, that, that um, you know, helped to forge musicians like myself have moved on. And, and they, and the, you know, the, the, the idea that we would, would interact and interface with these young musicians and pass on the wisdom and, 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 uh, um, and some of the spirit that is uh, uh, forged by fire a little bit, that's not, that you don't see so much of anymore in music. You know, everyone, everyone has this so, sort of air of positivity that they have to present all the time, you know? And, and I, I can just remember someone saying, you know, do you, can you remember the, the, the last compliment you got? And then, and then ask yourself, how much did that compliment help you improve? You know, and so I, I thought about, I thought about, uh, um, you know, that, that experience in my life and, and what I could do to help to be to be more uh, uh, of a mentor and a guide to young musicians. And so uh, in that spirit, I start first, I started just kind of teaching some lessons, making myself available for master classes and things. And then uh, I've taken it a step further and created the Mark Whitfield Academy. And so uh, I will be launching that soon. I take uh, um, I have some teachers coming on to teach and I've created a method for learning guitar, learning jazz guitar specifically. Uh, and so I'm launching that soon. Um, and I've been uh, recording, doing, I got into, you know, we got into, got into recording here in a home studio and, and, and uh, I designed a, a guitar for D'Angelico. So I, you know, I had, I had uh, cause, you know, I, it's funny talking about that, uh, you mentioned earlier, seeing me hold that red guitar on the L5 studio. So I, I had signed a deal with Gibson when I made, when I made my first, uh, my first Warner Brothers record. And they created, they made me the beautiful blonde L5. That was my, my, my mark with the floating pickup. That was my signature Mark Whitfield model. Uh, and I was playing in Europe and a guy um, picked it up and dropped it. Basically. Oh. Uh, and it snapped the headstock uh, right, you know, right, right, behind the, right behind the nut there. So right. through the customer shop in Nashville, they uh, put on a new neck. It was gorgeous. But during the process of putting on the new neck, they split the top in three places. So they put, you know, the bridges on it. When I got it back, it just never sounded the same, right? right. So I sold to a, a collector in Japan, took that money, and I had just met Stephen Marchioni. And so, uh, uh, and so I, and that's, I went to, you know, a friend of mine introduced me to Stephen, and Stephen made me the, probably the greatest guitar I've ever played. You know, that was, that's my, my, uh, my, my red Marchioni. And, uh, um, and I remember uh, Stephen was going to make it natural, with a natural finish, you know, the whole thing. And, and, I, and I was watching, uh, it had to have been the Jay Leno show uh, tonight. To the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and I see George. Of course, George is on there, and he and he was playing. Um, you can do it, baby. The little the collaboration with Lil Louis Vega, right? And so uh, I see if he comes on. He's got he's got this beautiful red uh, uh, GB five, right? They, they were basically like Elf, the Ibanez version of the of the, of the L five. And sure. so the next day I call. Either the next day or a few days later, I call. I like, George, man, man, they sounded great. I gotta get one of those red GB fives, and for the first time in my entire you know uh, relationship with him, he he uh, he kind of stiff armed me a little bit. He, he's like, "Oh, well, I don't know about that, brother. I don't know if you're ready for a red L five, but I don't know." <laughs> and I'm, you know, and he was just kind of kidding around with you know with the way he said it. Yeah. And, and I was like, "What, right, yo, what?" I'm, Man, I gotta go. And I, I'm like, Steven, man, I need you to go out and get the brightest, you know, loudest cherry fire in the red you can find. And I need you to, I gotta go red, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, I get it, right? so, and, and Mark Yoni, he was not happy. I just remember being like, oh, uh, come on, what do you do? You know, and, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, but we, we, took, we, we talked, we worked through it. And, I remember getting the guitar, uh, uh, and the way I remember it now, like I got the guitar, I took it out of the box, I got the case, and I threw it in the car, and I drove straight to George's house in Englewood, right? You know, <laughs> and I'm ringing it back, you know, it's my guitar, you know, and, and all I heard was how, how happy he was for me. He's like, man, the guitar, this just, you know, he'd, he'd forgotten completely about the whole thing. <laughs> in your face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and, 
from that moment forward, I really couldn't couldn't imagine ever playing uh, a, a, another guitar besides that. I mean, it's even to this day, it's just I, the guitar. It's gotten it's just me. You know, it's an extension of myself. Stephen is just masterful. The thing is, it's become so valuable and precious to me. I don't like to travel with it. You know, uh, uh, I had I had him. You know, after, after about ten years or so, he he restored it for me and and made it made it even better than new. Uh, and so I started looking around for guitars that I could travel with. Because, you know, back in the, you know, we're talking about in, in the 90s, even into the early 2000s, we traveled with guitars and you could take amplifiers. There were very, there was very few limitations to what you could travel with, you know, on the, and now it's become ridiculous. And so uh, um, I, I had to find a way to be okay with the guitar I could check, you know, check in and, and something that was going to, you know, and so I, I eventually, uh, made a deal with the Angelico and I, I play their guitars to travel with. Uh, uh, and to that end, during the pandemic, I designed one. I, 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 you know, so I've got a signature series that's coming out um, later this year, I guess September, October. It's the uh, my second favorite guitar. So uh, that was the point. You know, I was like, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put my name on a guitar and and travel with it, and and and, and it's got to be something that I really enjoy playing. I, I, I could play proudly, you know, and so, um, so I, 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 I did that, and I made a number of videos for them, helping them promote, helping them promote the brand, and 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 uh, trying to keep uh, um, keeping jazz guitar as a focus for the company, because you know we as guitarists we can complain about 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 uh, which we used we to do quite a bit in the eighties and nineties that the companies weren't focused on making instruments for jazz musicians, for jazz guitarists. Right. Well, you know, if we as as notable, you know, as, as musicians of note, you know, guitarists who young young musicians will look up to and, you know, and, and, and want to emulate, if we don't help promote the jazz side of these brands, then we have no business complaining when they disappear. You know, and so uh, uh, I, I've taken it upon myself, myself and Russell Malone and Rodney Jones, other guys like that, we go in and we help promote the brand and 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 want to see it keep it going because uh in, in just uh just a year or so of them premiering their uh their uh, other you know guitars made for other styles they've become so immediately popular mm -hmm. you know so it's, i think it's important that um that we 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 we, we can, you know we continue the tradition of having great companies make great guitars that people can afford and and and, and uh, that young young musicians have have instruments that look and sound like they want to play jazz that's an important thing you know i think i still you know i still have the first guitar my first jazz guitar man i i uh, uh you know i i remember when i was um when i was 15 i got this uh from a guy in Seattle. This is one of the Ibanez lawsuit models. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and so this guitar, I mean, you know, uh, um, it, I felt like I was connected to the music. I was, like I was playing jazz, like, you know, I got the sound and, and the instrument. Who knows what would have happened if I, if my first act had been a Les Paul. <laughs> you know what I mean? It would have been, it could have been, it could have been a whole different story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one one can only imagine. <laughs> I mean, a, a really nice trio record um, with Jeff Watts and and Robert Hurst, uh, uh, which I'm looking to release soon. I've been working on a new record. Um, I reunited with my old manager David Pasick, and I and we, you know, and so we're make, I'm working on a record now uh, to release for Concord later on this year. Sort of a large ensemble kind of jazz '70s soul record, which would be nice. And uh, that's about it, man. I, I you know, I, I joined the faculty at a university that's about uh, 10 minutes from my house here in Jersey City. So myself, Jeff Watts, John Benitez, Omar Hakim, we're all on the on the faculty of the Young Jazz Program at New Jersey City University. That's so I, cool. I took on uh, four students at an ensemble there, and I still have a, a couple of uh, have a couple of students from the new school. And I have some private Zoom students that I teach internationally. And then uh, I'll sort of, you know, step away from all that once the academy launches and just kind of let, they, they, let that uh, let funnel all my students through, my students through the online school. Between that, playing, um, recording, that, that, that keeps an old man busy. That, I, I love it. Well, let me, let me just, uh, let me back up and say a couple of things. One is um, you're talking about the 
the um, you know the, the heroes. You know, our you know attrition is kind of taking care care of a bunch of heroes, and they're they're not around. Well, you know, I was going to just gonna say, well, you know, tag your it, brother. You know, tag your it. Um, you know, it's your turn. I mean, you you know, and and you and you you stepped right into it. You know, you you said, you know, I, I've got to you know move this along. So and so you designed a guitar. Yeah. Well, what you don't know, Stephen. Uh, will be talking to me right after I finish talking to you. Oh, yes. Marchione, uh, your guitar designer, your builder and all that kind of stuff. And I said to him, I said, well, listen, I'm going to have a conversation with Mark. And I really, you know, I know he's got his own instrument. It's an amazing sounding instrument. Um, he's, he's really, really tied into it. And I'd really like to have a 10 or 15 minute conversation with you about what's special about that guitar, you know, without giving away the secret sauce and all of that. And so when, when, when you and I are done, I'm going to be giving him a call and we're going to yeah, do the awesome. same kind of thing. Yeah. But I got to tell you, man, that is an awesome guitar. It, it's a, the, the guitar that, that, that he built for you is awesome. And I love the red. I, I thought you were going to tell me it came from the red violin. You know, remember the movie? Oh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it's, it's you, you know what, like when I saw you on stage with, with, uh, with Chris uh, Bodie and like that guitar, you know, and the thing about blonde guitars is they flash light all over the place, you know, I mean, on cameras and things like that. And they're, they're just, they're, they're really not that hip looking on stage that to me anyway, you know, what, what do I know? But that red guitar, Man, it's you, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, you, you could, you, there could be 12 guitar players on the stage doing one of those, you know, Eric Clapton things, you know, and all that, you know, and, 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 and everybody would know where you were. <laughs> everybody would know. And the thing sounds so damn good. Yeah. It and it's, is it right there? Is it bound? Is yeah. it right? Because well, I have another question for you regarding your playing. Yeah. So, um, I'm doing a, a, a master class and concert today at the at the Heart School up in uh -huh. Connecticut. So I this I'm playing this obviously so in the case. But here you go. That it's it's absolutely gorgeous. And you know, when I saw you in Atlanta, you did not bring it. I was really disappointed because I wanted to um I wanted to see the guitar. Oh, you were okay. playing you were playing a blue D'Angelico small body. If you were asked, you know, what kinds of things do you, you know, what's, what's, what is your style? What do you do? What, what, have, what have you brought to the party, you know, fr from where you, you know, where you came? In other words, like if someone say, man, play me some Mark Whitfield licks, you know, what would that, what would that answer be? What would they, what would they say? What would be, you know, hey, can you, can you play more like Mark? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we like what you're doing, but man, we're really looking for Mark on this track, you know? you got all that <laughs> you know you know what's really interesting is your right hand is incredibly active you know and people you know it's like it goes back to the old banjo thing you know but, but i'm not not but but i mean but your right hand is is incredibly active and i love that i lo I'd love to hear that in your, in your playing well that's that's freaking awesome man you, you wow. sound you sound great i want to let everybody know that we we did not cut the tape and say mark go warm up for 15 minutes and come back <laughs> <laughs> mark literally picked up the guitar right then and there just as you see it folks i mean there was no warm-up on that he just nailed that you know right to the you know and that, that, that was incredible that was really really great man i gotta tell you I, there's so many things that i wanted to talk to you about but here's the beauty of this is that we can do this again you know and um and now that you know you know to put a face with the name and all that anytime you got something going on i mean if you got something that's you know like hey man i'm gonna be at wherever it is or we're gonna do this we're gonna do that 
give me a shout, send me a text, give me a call, send me an email, throw up smoke signals, anything, you know, we'll, and we'll, we'll get something going and, you know, help you promote it. Cause it's all, that's what it's all about, man. Oh, that's beautiful. I appreciate that. It's all, it's all about, you know, promoting, promoting the stuff and, and all that. So there's a, there's a whole lot of things we get into. We could get into, you know, the, you know, you know things that, like you know the value of your berkeley education and stuff like that and you know there's there's so much stuff to talk about um but you know we've had a great conversation and i really appreciated every minute of it and and i really hold you in in, in very very high regard i i, I think you. you're i think you're really something uh you're an unbelievable player you're an intellect which when 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 people have got mental horsepower and they apply it to their art and they can be objective about it that's a rare human being because you get people that are really really you know brilliant people and they're you, you you've seen them you played with them and there's a list do i mean to name them i won't name them but you know what i'm saying but but when they can also come out and be objective about what it is they've done and what they've witnessed and what's going on man that's a special gift and you've got that gift which is going to make you a great educator should you decide that that's what you you know that that's where your, your heart's at so all right Bob uh, Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with the great Mark Whitfield. Thank you so much for doing this, brother. Yay. Hey, good luck to you. Please give my regards to Steven, okay? Uh, thanks, brother. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.